ITU, there are now a total of six billion mobile sub cellular subscriptions. In 2005, it was only 2.2 billion. So a dramatic increase in the use of mobile technologies in every part of the world. Mobile really represents um, Web3 and that, you know, the, the first iteration of the web was just kind of getting online and the second aspect of it was the kind of more social connection. But now the next kind of iteration and the next kind of major evolution of the web is from screens and from kind of stationary devices into our pockets and into our lives that uh, can impact us everywhere. There's been lots of just coverage in general in the media of major mobilization efforts led by young people or where young people have been a huge force for change using different forms of social media, but in particular their cell phones. One thing in Rio, I guess specifically we can talk about is that um, what we ended up actually kind of by accident doing um, on the second to last day, I was involved with a network of youth from around the world in uh, coordinating a major action inside the conference center, uh, which we labeled and kind of put throughout it of uh, the hashtag of uh, Rio fail because the messaging was don't let hashtag Rio fail. And inadvertently, we branded the end of the conference as a failure. Uh, which it was in a lot of ways by using a hashtag that kind of a few people started to put out um, and then Twitter went down and it came back up and all the heads of major environmental organizations, civil society in general, politicians were all using this hashtag. Wow. They were like, oh, well, and then it actually started to permeate into the media. It was the way it was framed in like the Guardian story on the end of it. It all kind of came in and went in through that. We can see it emerging from sort of grassroots, bottom-up hashtags, or organizations and institutions actually taking that on to create buzz and to create highlights and summaries of what's going on. It's just that uh, wherever you are, you can just uh, tweet or post on Facebook, and you see people uh, who put likes or retweet, and you spread the news immediately. So that's the real power of mobile technology, according to me. Uh, there's been also a huge use of technologies around data mapping. So in the December 2011 election in Kenya, where there were instances of violence, a group was formed called Ushahidi. They're quite a famous example where they allowed people to record different instances of violence. And you see the use of their technology now. They've opened it up. And it's about documentation of whether it be different human rights abuses and just generally promoting democratic liberization, uh, liberation of people. And so you can see how technology developed from one event and for one purpose can be opened up and, and used and people can use their mobile phones from different locations to, to record different instances. I, the fourth major area is around crowdfunding. There's been a huge rise in crowdfunding. I would say that the, the Haiti earthquake January 12, 2010 was a catalyst for the Red Cross in particular. On day two, they raised over $5 million. People could text a number 90999 and donate $10 and they raised so much money to support people in Haiti and this is just a great example of people raising funding through their mobile phones through that dial-in number and many um, companies have also offered matching donations um, and these are techniques where uh, people are now not only raising for charitable causes but they're putting it out there to get uh, venture capital for new initiatives and, and to brainstorm ideas so crowdfunding is another major er um, area. Um, and the other sort of key theme, and it kind of relates to data mapping, but not so much at the macro level, more at the individual level, is around the sort of neighborhood connections and tracking your own personal lifestyle choice. And with support of an anonymous donor and partnership with Active Philanthropy, we've been able to very recently launch an online app um, on the iPhone initially. It's the, the Commit to Act application which we've told all of you about and this this promotes people to make conscious choices that have a a huge effect on reducing their ecological footprint and um, there's there's so many different commitments and I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing how some of you all are using this particular app but it sort of fits in that tracking your lifestyle what are the choices that you are making on a daily basis to make the world a better, better place, to live more sustainably, uh, to reduce your ecological footprint. The online world um, is kind of not nearly as good as stuff that allows the online to really reinforce the offline. And so uh, we found that the, the app itself uh, allows, Commit to Act allows you to really see what other young people are doing around the world and to create these connections and these groups of people um, who might be part of a network that you're already a part of or, or might just be taking kind of simultaneous and parallel actions 
um, but without knowing each other. And so you can connect to these new people um, and kind of see what other folks are doing and, and get involved in, in reinforcing each other's actions. Um, for example, I downloaded the application to commit to Act a couple of days ago and I started trying to use it. And uh, that's really nice. I think that we should, uh, there should be uh, something about climate change as well. For example, we could, um, something could be added in terms of CO2 emissions. For example, taking a, the train uh, instead of taking a plane. That could be something about it. And uh, um, I think this is an example of what, of what could be done even here to engage uh, youth. When I attended COEA, the Conference of Youth, before COP17, uh, I realized that I was the only Italian at the conference <laughs> uh, uh, when every other movement had at least five or ten people attending. So I asked myself uh, why uh, I was the only one there. So I decided once I came back to, uh, to, to create this, uh, this, this youth section of the Italian Climate Network, uh, truly inspired by uh, some youth movements, especially uh, the ones uh, I work with more. Where so can you tell us a little bit more about what your goal is with the app that you're developing? And also, I mean, we had our own experience in trying to create a, a mobile app. So what are some of the thoughts that you have uh, in, in creating a mobile app? And for anyone who might be dialing in and thinking about you know, creating their own mobile app, uh, they might have a lot of questions floating through their minds. So what are the questions that you are struggling with or thinking about as you develop a mobile app? Uh, thank you. I, I think this is very, this is how I plan to naturally fall from one topic to the other. Because, Excellent. Um, after you finish, after you finish this program, for example, the, um, the, the enterprise without borders or yep. your own company, um, we try to, in, to involve the students even afterwards. So, um, how, for example, me, I am an alumni of this program. So, this changing lives campaign, we decided that all these alumni who have participated in this uh, kind of activities, they are interested in still getting in contact with other entrepreneurs across the world who are, are also doing things like that. We yep. created the website where people, after they go back to their schools, they take a picture of the, of the, of the people who are there and they register it on the website saying, I've been to my school in this city and I've reached 100 students telling them about um, my business in wow. something. So, um, and, and the, at the top of the website there is a counter which counts how many students and our goal is to reach 100,000 students for one calendar year. So, um, we, we started this summer and we will end next summer um, and we already have like 4,000 almost um, students reached, so uh, it's, it's going, it's on the go. Even you were focusing on uh, reaching a very specific goal, you know, 100,000 people, and uh, really it's being used to help monitor uh, and track your progress towards that particular goal. And thinking about impact evaluation as, as a key pillar to your motivation is, is really great. And also the other element of engaging your alumni. So people who are going through this experience, going through the training, and how do they stay connected and um, you know together pretty much after that experience. I think it's, it's really great and I, I'm just grateful for that case study.